my ears are asymmetrical. It's just uh, no way around it. Get him to tell you that story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know how my ears got asymmetrical? I'm not sure there's any deep dharma to it. I was in a car accident long, long time ago. And uh, we flipped over in a, like a little sports car. Mm -hmm. I was a passenger. We got uh, like sucked under a truck. It can actually happen. It's like a triumph. It's a very, very light car. We were going from San Francisco to LA. And um, there's no Dharma in this story, okay? <laughs> uh, is there any Dharma in this story? Can I make you it can, into it? You can make it into it. Uh, no, there's no Dharma. Uh, uh, this was before I was in the meditation. It was like way, way back in the crazy days. Um, so yeah, I, me and my friend were driving back from uh, um, San Francisco to LA, and he just bought this car. Uh, and um, so um, I didn't want to use the uh, safety belt. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I, it may have been back when it still wasn't mandatory. You know? And he says, no, there's no way that we're going to drive without you having that seat belt on. So I put it on. Um, uh, he was in a normal state of consciousness. I had decided to be in an altered state. <laughs> <laughs> Highly altered. Because back in the day, we were living in Haight-Ashbury, so you get the general idea here. What did you take? Huh? What did you take? LSD. <laughs> Wow. Uh, <laughs> I haven't heard this one. There's no dharma in this story. <laughs> it's just like a weird story. I, I can't put a spin on it to be of any value to you. Uh, it's just, God, he did crazy shit. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, it's like a couple, a couple hours down from San Francisco, we just got sucked under a truck and then skidded out. Uh, and uh, fishtailed and then flipped over and over again and landed upside down. Mm -hmm. And of course, the only reason I'm still here is mm -hmm. that I have the safety because otherwise I would have just been out, you know. So, yeah, I'm just sort of tripping out on the side. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see you're liking this story. It's not going anywhere. You can find it in the garden. Yeah, it was like things are getting, you know, the, Electrical poles were like becoming you know, sci-fi movies, and uh, and then and then there's sort of like this rumble, and then the next thing, it was just nothing. It was like uh, I have complete retroactive retroactive amnesia. Mm -hmm. I was just there was this rumble, and the next thing, I'm looking up at a highway patrolman, and he's looking right down, and. Um, uh, my friend comes over and he's all bloody and everything, and he said, we had an accident. Uh, <laughs> 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 and uh, and I, I think I said, am I okay? And then I, I, then I, I passed out. And then the next thing, or I'm like in an ER, uh, and this doctor's looking down at me, uh, and uh, he says, your ear has been torn off, but don't worry, we can sew it back on. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, the LSD trip is still happening. <laughs> it did not stop. <laughs> <laughs> it never did. Um, it was it was never a bad trip. Um, I said, "Oh, great, okay." So it back on. But I, I didn't wasn't a meditator. I just got lucky, I guess. I just didn't freak out. Um, and uh, uh, and apparently, uh, my friend who. 
the guy that was driving, who eventually became an MD himself, actually. Uh, but uh, he told me that we lucked out because the, the guy was a really good surgeon. And you can't tell that, that the, you know, it's like, you, you couldn't quite tell which one it was, but you could still see the scar here from, uh, so, uh, so there was, there were some funny parts, like my friend came up, uh, he spoke Japanese, he, he was American, uh, I, I mean he was non-Asian, but uh, we'd been in Japan together, and so he says to me in Japanese, don't worry that the doctor's looking right in your eyes because uh, you're, uh, with head trauma your eyes dilate anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they're not gonna. They're not gonna know. <laughs> so he's sneaking me this secret message in Japanese in front of the doctor. Right? Uh, so I said, "Okay, good." <laughs> and then, <laughs> actually something pretty funny. Uh, so I had to be in the hospital, but then they let me out the next day. It was, uh, you know, really lucked out because freaking totaled the car. I completely destroyed the car and neither of us sustained any significant injury. And my friend had the presence of mind to uh, bury all the drugs uh, by the roadside. <laughs> Despite the fact that he thought he had killed me. Because so, I was just hanging out, unconscious, you know, because the car was upside down. It was definitely not a serene scene, apparently. But, uh, you know, I have blessedly no memory of this at all. Um, but, so they keep you in the hospital, and I'm just laying there at night, and I'm just peeking. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at the ceiling, and it's like flowers are breathing. You know, it's well. There's the Dharma. Okay, expansion and contraction. <laughs> it's very evident. So I caught, I couldn't get to sleep. Right. Uh, so uh, so I called the nurse and. Um, uh, you know, I, I can't get to sleep good. Just like, give me something to help me get to sleep. <laughs> she, she says, oh no, in cases of head trauma like this, we never want you to be on any drugs. <laughs> That's how I got asymmetrical ears. <laughs> but actually, I can work Dharma into this in a very minor way, um, which is um, after that, I started to have something. Um, uh, there was no untoward consequences of this, apparently, um, it, other than my parents pretty much freaked out when I called them. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was, it was okay, and I had a clinical EEG, they checked out everything. But I, I did start to have something happen uh, that uh, has subsequently happened, um, uh, you know, uh, from that time on, um, which is, uh, and I, I, it was probably a consequence of this, I don't know, but there's something called sleep paralysis. You probably experienced it, where you uh, uh, you really think you're awake uh, and you can't move, and then all sorts of sometimes some very weird stuff happens. Um, uh, some people get Kundalini rising, uh, and so it's, they call it the exploding head syndrome. Uh, I had I've had that happen many times. Uh, during the sleep paralysis thing, this like it's like someone sheared off a fire hydrant. If you've ever seen what that looks like, uh, except it's going up your spine and blasting out of the top of your head. Um, so I started to have the, occasionally those kinds of experiences. But the really weird things were um, I would um, 
I would have experiences where I uh, thought I was awake and things had happened in the real world. I mean, I absolutely was convinced that they had happened. Um, but then the re when I checked reality with all people, uh, they hadn't happened. So I was having dreams uh, that were so vivid that they completely fooled me. Um, and that was a little bit weird. And then, um, so, so some of you, if you've ever had this sleep paralysis, then you know what I'm talking about. Now, what's happened over the years is be I eventually did start to meditate, but the sleep paralysis thing still happens. But it's completely different because now I'm lucid. I, I, I know it's happening, and I know I'm a meditator, and so I can play with it. And well, I don't play with it, I, I just meditate in it and sort of explore it as an altered state. Um, but um, in addition to the uh, exploding head syndrome uh, and the dreaming that is so vivid, that, that, that really sort of alters your sense of what might be reality. Like, let's just imagine, um, imagine if in 10 seconds you suddenly find yourself in bed and someone's waking you up saying you had a dream you were at a meditation retreat. <clears throat> uh, just imagine how jarring that would be. Uh, so that, that happened a lot of times. And that was sort of interesting because once again I, uh, I hadn't meditated yet so I didn't have a context for this kind of thing. But it really does make you think like Maybe this is just one really big dream. Um, so anyway, that's... Uh, and the other cool thing is I completely understand alien abductions. Uh, I have been abducted by aliens. It's happened several times. Um, and it's a classic. I mean, the whole classic thing, they're gibbering in, in uh, some extraterrestrial language, and um, yes, it's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> I have experienced it myself several times. They do pro. <laughs> I can confirm, and it is what they say. It's that place that gets probed. Uh, the one little difference is, do you think I'm making this up? I, I, it's happened any number of times. Uh, but the, the one difference is, um, I know it's happening in sleep paralysis. I, I don't think that. It's, uh, but it's very, very vivid. It's actually the origin, this, this sleep paralysis and then weird shit happening uh, with you being like violated or in some way like being touched in a way you don't want to be touched, et cetera, et cetera. That is the origin of the word nightmare. Um, originally, well, night is night. What the hell's a mare? Uh, it's, it's not a, a, a female equine species. Mare uh, is a, a demon. And it may even be cognate to the Sanskrit word mara. I'm not quite sure about that, which is the demons or devils in Buddhism. Um, the original nightmare was uh, an experience of a, uh, an incubus or a succubus. These are like creatures that uh, sit on your chest and, uh, or they uh, prod you or bite you or do weird things that are like very uncomfortable. Uh, and this goes back centuries and centuries. You can look it up, succubus and incubus. Those were the Latin terms for it. Uh, but nightmare was the Anglo-Saxon. So this sort of being paralyzed in sleep and having weird stuff happening 
that's, there's a lot of cultural references to it, but each age interprets it differently. So in the Middle Ages, where people were superstitious in the Christian sense, they thought it was devils and things like that. And nowadays people sort of have archetypes of sci-fi and space opera, so they experience it as an alien abduction. So I know, I know that I'm just in sleep paralysis. I, I'm not, I don't believe it's actually happening, but it's very, very vivid. It's as vivid as anything. Um, but I don't know if this is true for other people, but um, I, can, I can tell you that um, when, um, when uh, as I'm waking up, as I'm waking up uh, from, the, uh, from this, um, I could actually watch the transition between the two realities. The one where there's these aliens and they're, they're doing this anal probe thing, okay? And then coming back to the current physical reality. And I don't know if it's other people, it's the same or not, or this is just me. But um, as I'm coming back to ordinary reality, the experience of the anal probe uh, becomes the experience of uh, detecting uh, my pulse in that region of my body. It's an act, it, so apparently it's, that's a slightly uncomfortable sensation if you're in a, a vulnerable sleep-like state and it gets interpreted, at least that's my experience. And it's always that, it's always I can, I can detect my pulse there. It has a physical basis, and I guess it's just a very sensitive region that when you're in a sleep state, yeah, yeah. Louis is finding this uh, hilarious. But you, has it happened to you? I refuse to talk about I know, it's very painful, it's hard to talk about. reveal the source of my laugh. I'm not going to reveal why I'm laughing. I see. Well, I tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check to see if you've got a zipper back here <laughs> that you're just wearing a human suit and you're one of them. <laughs> Come to think of it, that seems plausible. <laughs> yeah, I remember you from somewhere. <laughs> well, that is not a Dharma talk. <laughs> But they say you should tell stories, so that's how my ears got asymmetrical and how my mind got maybe commensurately warped, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>